My name is Jerry Frank Hoare. I'm a retired physician's assistant. I'm also a two-time breast cancer survivor. I am an advocate in science for Susan G. Komen. I'm the vice chair for Florida Breast Cancer Foundation, and I also sit on an advisory panel for the National Institute of Health. In 2003, I was first diagnosed with breast cancer. It was DCIS, which is ductal carcinoma in situ. Went and had the mammogram, then the biopsy, and opted for surgery. I chose to have the lumpectomy, figuring we could save the breast tissue. The lumpectomy didn't work. We didn't get clear margins, so I had to go back in, and we ended up doing a complete mastectomy. After being diagnosed a second time, I knew I didn't want to go through the technetium injection with the blue dye for the lymph nodes, so I started doing some investigation, and I found that in Europe they had developed a compound that was non-toxic and not radioactive, and I thought that was what I wanted to do. And basically wrote a letter to the powers that be at UF Health and said I wanted Lisa Spiegel, as she's one of the best surgeons around, and I wanted the mag trace, and if they could not approve the mag trace, then I would go to another place where I could get mag trace. I'm Lisa Spiegel. I'm a breast surgical oncologist and the clinical lead at the Breast Center at the University of Florida in Gainesville. So when we perform a mastectomy for DCIS, historically, we sample the lymph nodes during that procedure with a sentinel lymph node biopsy. The reason being is because there is a potential for an invasive component that will be found on final pathology. And if we don't sample those nodes at that initial operation, if we don't map those lymphatics at the initial operation, then we are unable to come back to successfully and confidently map those lymph nodes once the breast has been removed. Removing lymph nodes can cause problems. It can cause breast cancer-related lymphedema, which is arm swelling, which has no good cure it can cause pain, it could cause effect on range of motion, it can cause numbness. And so if we can avoid these procedures in patients that don't need them, then we can improve the quality of life of our breast cancer patients. MagTrace is similar to the conventional techniques like technetium and blue dye in terms of mapping the lymphatic channels at the time of the operation. The advantage of MagTrace is that the compound stays within the sentinel nodes for up to four weeks. So it allows us to have the opportunity to come back in a delayed operation, in a delayed fashion, to sample those sentinel nodes if invasive cancer is found. Multiple prospective studies have demonstrated the accuracy and feasibility of the use of MagTrace as a delayed lymphatic mapping agent. If you look at the data of patients undergoing surgery for DCIS, only 20 to 25% of those patients will have a component, an invasive component associated with DCIS. Therefore, if we can omit sentinel node biopsy, we could spare 80% of women an unnecessary procedure on their lymph nodes, as the majority of those women will not have an associated invasive cancer. This has the opportunity to revolutionize how we treat patients with DCIS undergoing mastectomy. I was excited, I was thrilled, I had done my research and knew that this was going to be a much better option than the technetium and the horrible burning that you get with that. And I had the best surgeon, so I knew everything was gonna be fine. So to me, it was a totally stress-free day. For Jerry, what we did was we injected it uh, prior to surgery in the preoperative area. This was a world apart. It, it, there was minimal discomfort. Basically, it was pain-free. We then massaged the breast for about five to 10 minutes, and then we uh, took her to the operating room for her procedure, and uh, it was very simple. 
Luckily with Jerry, I didn't have to go back uh, to do a delayed sentinel node biopsy because she did not have any invasive cancer on her final pathology. Having had breast cancer previously, there's always that in the back of your mind, the other shoe is going to drop and the other shoe didn't drop. I am very grateful that Jerry came to be our first patient and pioneer of this approach at University of Florida. And so my interest in the product to offer this to my patients with pre-invasive or non-invasive stage zero breast cancer undergoing mastectomy really just was a perfect unity with Jerry, who is a very educated patient. This is gonna be a game changer for um, surgical treatment in breast cancer. Since her procedure, this has been our standard practice. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>